Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting and another edition of Some Bunny Loves You. Today is Saturday, March 28th, 2020. My name is Donna. This is a short vlog about a children's literature book with a bunny-related content as well as a craft that has some uh, relationship to a bunny today. So let's go ahead and get started. The craft that I have today, it wouldn't really call it a craft other than it was created by sewing. And if you are a sewer or you browse through YouTube or Facebook or different places, you'll see there are a number of tutorials being put out there for handmade masks. And people around the country are creating these masks to help out in the shortage at this time. I am not at this time creating these to distribute to the local hospitals and I find that such a worthy thing to do and I really want to do that but I have a number of reasons why I'm not and I'll start off with I have watched a number of the tutorials today um, or maybe it was yesterday I watched one where they talked about using a HEPA filter in the mask and I thought now that is exactly what you need and the they then showed what I thought was probably the best idea was taking vacuum cleaner bags with the HEPA liner for the bag and using the edges that are already seamed or they're they're I think they use some kind of heat pressure to hermetically seal those edges and so from this particular size bag you could get four masks that seems like probably a better solution than some of the others that I have seen because I think I, I feel hesitant creating something to give to someone to protect them if I don't know for a fact that it will because these doctors and nurses are on the front line and they're the ones that are exposed constantly. I think if we're making something for ourselves, that's different because we're not with someone coughing in our face, that sort of thing. So I am hesitant to do that for the safety aspect. So having HEPA material inside is important, but you can't sew through it. Because if you do, then you're poking holes in it. So this vacuum cleaner bag idea I thought was excellent. The other things that I've heard about making these is that you wouldn't want to use any pins, so you want to use clips or something if you are going to go that route. I can't find these vacuum cleaner bags. Um, I don't own any, and my vacuum cleaner, I have a, a central vac, and then I also have a second vacuum cleaner, but it's bagless, so I don't have any. And I've checked Amazon, and there were several I thought I could order, but the ones that seemed the best didn't actually say HEPA, so I'm hesitant there too. I would want that guarantee there, the brand name guarantee there. Another few things about making these masks was it was important that you never put it up to your face, that you actually sew while wearing a mask. So make the first mask for yourself. Make sure that you are sanitizing your hands and everything that you'd be sewing on and that you're wearing a mask while creating this and then to seal it in a plastic bag after you're done. So those all are all things that if you're going to do it seem like um, a good idea and what else um, so let me show you the one that I did make I, I've actually made three now from this pattern it's the Olsen mask pattern and it was it's at made at generate in this hospital they had a, a tutorial and what this pattern says to do is that you don't actually at attach the elastic and instead you're, you're using um, these cloth covered uh, hair elastics and you don't actually sew them on so that they can be custom fit so they would try one on somebody and then they would have to stitch the seams down well I don't know that every place that you're gonna make them for is gonna have that capability of doing that. This particular place, that's what they wanted. If you were going to make them do this, they would sew them down so that they could get a really good seal. And then they're going to be using a tape that they would put across this part of the face and probably down here too. It's a probably double-sided, but it's safe for skin. 
and then once the mask is on in place then they press down to get the appropriate seal so I don't know that every place you would take them would have that if you knew you were doing that that would be great too another tutorial I watched suggested that you use this non woven interfacing so this is what I have it's actually the adhesive kind and I don't really like this so much for sewing because once you wash it it kind of crinkles and you can't get the crinkles out at all but for something like this I don't think that matters at all but it's not um, cotton will not stop necessarily germs going through it maybe it's better than nothing in front of you but it they will go through that even a couple of layers but this being non-woven it's not a HEPA filter again but for yourself I think this might be really good I added two layers of this one on the inside piece and one on the outside piece that you're, you have front and back part that you're doing so I put it on both and then I watched another where they suggested this that same one they were using a piece of metal here so that you could um, pinch it and get a good fit and the way to tell it's a good fit is when you put it on if you are breathing you don't fog your glasses up that means you're not this stuff's not escaping out of the top so this piece of metal they took a uh, reusable or a, a disposable aluminum type baking dish and then cut these metal pieces out folded them over and back and then sewed them into the mask well the one that I watched today that talked about using the vacuum cleaner bags they instead used um, a chenille stick so this is sewn into this part so that it can be fitted a little bit better so here's what I came up with I, I did one earlier just like to test out the pattern and see how it, it worked and how it fit this one has the double layer of the fusible, fusible non-woven interfacing and the um, chenille stick and what I did was made a pocket for that at the top so that it, when washing it you could pull that out wash it and then put it back in so here it is it has a bunny fabric so there's my bunny relationship there's a cute little blue bunny on it and to put this on you'll see the sides have this little pocket so you wouldn't if you were delivering this you would to a hospital you wouldn't sew this part you would give them these and then they would sew it to fit the person and you would want to do that because when I first made it I just sewed it where I thought it should go and then when I put it on it was too loose so I had to pull that out and do it again and then pinch here I better talk louder it, I don't get a great seal because my glasses will start to fog up, but not as much as they did without that stick in there. So it's really comfortable. Of course it warms up, but you can see I'm get, you might not be able to see, but I can. I'm getting some steam on there. So the seal is not perfect, and that makes me fear that these health professionals need to wear what is intent for that intention and that we're like there's a guarantee that it's going to stop things I realize something is better than nothing so if you have nothing but I just feel so responsible and um, I just until I can figure out a way that I feel I'm really would be giving something very useful to somebody on the front lines I'm not gonna make them for that purpose but I think for my family my daughter had a cough and I gave her the first one that I made and that way she felt like at least she wasn't coughing on people which is really good anyway whether I mean she has allergies and just so she's not coughing on everybody because one doesn't know if you have been exposed you're not sick for a while so you just don't know so that's my bunny craft and my book today this book is called marshmallow and this book was written by Claire Turley Newberry this was the winner of the Caldecott Honor in 1943. And her daughter, Felicia Trujillo, has republished the book. And so it has a 2006 or 8 copyright. But it is a sweet story about this little bunny. If I can keep the sun off it a little bit. 
this cute little bunny named Marshmallow. And Marshmallow is introduced as a very young bunny to a home with Oliver. And Oliver is never been outside, doesn't know anything from bunnies, and at first is afraid of the bunny. But as time goes on, it's more like he wants to pounce on the bunny so they get separated. Long story short, not really a long story, it's a short story, but um, eventually they become best of friends in this house. And the final comment is, a, a bunny's a delightful habit, no home's complete without a rabbit. And this was a little poem that the lady who owns the house was had written out which is part of the story so that's just repeated at the end really sweet book i i enjoy it thoroughly and as you can see a caldecott winner but quite an old one and this type illustration to me is so nostalgic because it reminds me of all of the books that i had as a child the illustrations were so similar and very few colors just a few colors here and there so it's very nostalgic for those of us from another generation. So that's our book today, Marshmallow, a nice little bunny book with very sweet illustrations. And that's um, all that I have today. So I hope I will see you again tomorrow. I'm pretty sure, considering it's the weekend, that I'll be able to get with you tomorrow. And I hope that you're having a lovely day and finding lots of things to do inside. Bye.